And there you've had Crime and Peter Chambers. Dane Clark was starred as Peter Chambers. Crime and Peter Chambers transcribed was created and written by Henry Kane. Others in the cast were Bill Zuckert, heard as Lieutenant Parker, Joyce Gordon as Angela, and Bernard Grant as Oliver. It was directed by Fred Way. And this is Fred Collins inviting you to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Dane Clark in Crime and Peter Chambers. And that's Crime and Peter Chambers from June 1st, 1954, with a Robert Wentworth case starring Dane Clark, as heard on NBC. Hope you enjoyed that. Let's take a quick break, then it's more on the WGN Radio Theater. Hey, Lisa, if you or anyone listening wants five classic radio shows absolutely free, now these are full-length, half-hour shows, digitally remastered, they're available at our website, 100radioshows.com. That's the number 100, radioshows.com. If you go to the top of that website, there is a place for you to put your email address. Put your email in there, hit send, and you will receive five classic radio shows. What are the five shows? That would be Jack Benny, Fibber McGee and Molly, Gunsmoke, Suspense, and Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Right. No strings attached. Nope. Absolutely free. Get them via digital download. When you are at the website, you'll notice that there are hundreds of additional classic radio shows available for purchase. If you do decide to purchase any of those shows, make sure that you use the promo code radio. That's the secret word. If you put in the promo code radio, you save 70%. So that's yep. a great savings, great classic radio shows. Check out the website 100radioshows.com. Yep. And that uh, promo code goes in at checkout and you'll notice that the uh, in your like shopping cart, the price drops by 70% by plugging in the promo code radio at checkout. All right. In our next hour, we'll tune in to my mom's favorite favorite radio show, Dr. Kildare. She has a tie. Dr. Kildare and Life with Luigi are her two favorite shows. In our next hour, it's the story of Dr. Kildare. Then we'll hear part one of You Bet Your Life, starring Groucho Marx. That's coming your way right after the news. Welcome back to the WGN Radio Theater. Lisa and I are here every Saturday night, 10 p.m. until 3 o'clock in the morning, playing eight classic radio shows each and every week. All your favorites, including Suspense and Jack Benny and The Shadow and The Whistler, they're all here. Make sure you tell a friend and thank you very much for listening. On this hour, it's the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. We'll also hear part one, the first half, of You Bet Your Life, starring Groucho Marx. Now, all of these classic radio shows are in my library, 100,000 shows directly from the master recording, and each and every month I hand choose 10 shows, I, very special shows. Mike Estella digitally remasters them. I write very copious liner notes about those 10 shows, and we send them to members of the Classic Radio Club. Now, you can get those shows sent to your email each and every month, all 10 shows, or you can get them sent to you on five CDs in a collector case. Now, a very nice presentation. There's pictures of the radio stars on the outer case. It's really, really nice. And you can learn all about joining the Classic Radio Club at ClassicRadioClub.com. The first month, it's only a dollar to try it out. So go to ClassicRadioClub.com. We hope you'll try it. And you know what? You can cancel it any time, and you'll never get a duplicate Classic Radio show. Classic Radio Club. Dot com. All right, when we come back, it's the story of Dr. Kildare. Stick around.
Hour three of the WGN Radio Theater will be here till three o'clock in the morning. In this hour, it's the story of Dr. Kildare. Now, this was a medical drama, Lisa, based on the characters made popular by a series of MGM medical melodramas. Stories revolved around the patients and staff at Blair Memorial Hospital. Lou Ayers took the lead role of young, handsome, and skilled surgeon Dr. Kildare, and character Actor actor Lionel Barrymore played crusty mentor figure Dr. Gillespie. It was syndicated in 1950, and it provided an effective precursor to the Dr. Kildare television series seen in the early 1960s. That starred Richard Chamberlain as Dr. Kildare and Raymond Massey as Dr. Gillespie. We have a 1950 radio broadcast for you now called Angela Carew. This stars Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Let's go back to June 1st, 1950. Uninterrupted now, here's the story of Dr. Kildare. The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men... I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. And now, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Come in. Oh, Dr. Gillespie. Say, did you get a summons up to Dr. Carew's office? I did, just now. Yeah, I did, too. What do you suppose the old goat wants this time? (laughs) I don't know. Oh, probably someone on the board of directors has a tummy ache or an acute case of hypochondria. You know, he gets to be more and more of a nuisance every day. All the Carews in the world are nuisances, aren't they? Yes, and unfortunately, the world is full of them. Well, shall we go up together? I'm ready. It's a doggone shame, you know, that we haven't got an apple to take along and put on his desk. Why, Dr. Gillespie, you go wash your mouth out with soap. Why? Well, you use the word apple. You know what they say, an apple a day does. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Keeps the doctor away. <laughs> Isn't that a little corny, oh, Kildare? I it? suppose it is. But it comes out in the best of us at times. Come on, let's report to headquarters. Good morning, teacher. <laughs> You two dear fellows are never satisfied unless you have your little joke, are you? <laughs> yeah. I don't think he liked our greeting, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, yes, I did. There's nothing I like better than to see high spirits in my associates. As long as they don't become high with spirits, eh, Dr. Carew? Uh, talk about corn. <laughs> I say, that's, that's really good. As long as they don't become high with spirits. Get it, Kildare? No, I don't. He means as long as they don't become intoxicated. He does? Up. Of course he does. Uh, don't you, Dr. Gillespie? Oh, uh, I'm sorry I ever opened my big mouth. High spirits. I must remember to tell my wife that. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, well, <clears throat> we've had our bit of fun. Now to more serious business. Boys, I have a problem. Yes, yes Dr. Dr. Crew. I need help, and I know I can count on you. Can't I? To the death. Ditto. There we are. There's the spirit that has made Blair General Hospital what it is today. Gentlemen, I salute you. Kildare, tension. What's your problem, Dr. Carew? My wife's too fat. What did you say? I said my wife's too fat. 
Well, you don't need a diagnostician and a surgeon for oh, that. Oh, yes, I do. All right, all right, all right. As a diagnostician, I can tell you right now that the reason she's too fat is because she overeats. And as a diagnostician, I can also inform you that it's impossible for a surgeon to operate as a cure for obesity. That correct, Dr. Kildare? Correct, Dr. Gillespie. Now, 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 don't be hasty. Gentlemen, I know that the proposed new polio hospital wing is dear to both your hearts. Yes, but what does that have to do with Mrs. Carew's weight? Everything, dear fellow, everything. I am planning a special benefit performance to be held in two months for the wing. A, a show, you know, singing, dancing, and famous personalities. All that. Well, I still... I Angela don't... used to be quite a famous dancer. She wants to dance again. And I want her to dance again. Lots of people come to see her dance again who remembered her from the days when she was the toast of New York. Mm. Angela must be her old, slim, felt, enchanting, adorable self. And she must dance her way once more into the hearts of this great, cold city and warm it, as she used to. Mm. A very pretty sentiment, and I appreciate your feeling, Dr. Carew, but what can we do about it? For the sake of the polio wing, get 20 pounds off Angela. Well, I... Never handled a case just like this. Uh... No, neither have I. I knew you'd help me out. Now then, Angela will be at the hospital in an hour. I'll send her down to see you. Dear Dr. Kildare and Dr. Gillespie, <laughs> you sweet old grumpy you. Oh, I believe I'm going to kiss you. Oh, no, Angela. It isn't necessary to go to any such lengths. <laughs> oh, what a precious old Grumpy. Well, Bumpy tells me that you two are going to make me thin. Bumpy? Dr. Carew. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> well, we're going to do our best. Uh, Let's see, Mrs. Carew, you weigh, according to our scale now, 150 pounds. Don't say it so loud. It's embarrassing. We'll have to put you through a thorough physical examination, of course, before you can start your diet. We'll want you to come in early in the morning for that. You'll have a basal metabolism test, and you'll find your instructions written on this piece of paper. Well, of course, I don't know what's gotten into Bumpy. He used to say he didn't like girls that were like string beans. Well, 20 pounds from now, you're still going to be a long way from being a string bean, Angela. Well, I guess I'd better go out on a real binge this afternoon. Binge? What kind of binge? Maybe a double banana split binge. That will make just that much more you'll have to take off. Oh, I'll worry about that tomorrow. See you both in the morning. Mm, don't forget the paper with your instructions. Oh, yes, that's right. Well, toodaloo. Well, toodaloo. Oh, you sweet, precious, grumpy you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Say, you know, I may throw up. <laughs> I don't know. I certainly didn't study medicine and put in all that work to spend my time taking fat off people who just shovel it back onto themselves as fast as they can eat. That's right. Sure it is. That's right. It isn't very smart when you stop to think about it. By carrying a lot of extra weight around, Angela is weakening her strength and shortening her life and spoiling her looks. Think we can get her to diet? Well, we better we'll start looking for another hospital. Come in. Well, what two shining, happy faces I see. Molly, have you any favorite way of taking off weight? Oh, sure. I bang this against the wall like this. <clears throat> Does it work? Well, I think so. Oh, did you two draw Mrs. Carew? Yeah, we certainly did. <laughs> I just heard Dr. Carew giving a statement to the papers that she was to stage a comeback and for the sake of dear Blair General Hospital would redo her famous Dance of the Willow. Yeah. Oh, I'd better get back to work. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Dr. Carew. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, here are my great doctors. Dr. Brownlee, may I present Dr. Gillespie and Dr. Kildare? How to do? Uh, Dr. Brownlee is a diet specialist from London. I just uh, told him how you propose to take 20 pounds off Mrs. Carew by your unique and original scientific methods. And he has asked permission to observe you at work, which I have given him. He's terribly grateful. Oh, quite. Well, we're glad to have you, Doctor, but we haven't actually started on the case yet. We're beginning our examinations of Mrs. Carew in the morning. Quite. Well, I know you'll enjoy having this learned colleague with you. I'll just leave you boys to get acquainted. Quite. Uh, uh, how long have you been in New York, Dr. Brownlee? One week. You uh, enjoying yourself? Quite. Uh, 
Well, where have you been since you arrived? No place. Oh, oh well, would you like to look around the town? No, thank you. Uh, yes, I, be- I imagine you miss England. Quite. Uh, so what time is it? My word, five o'clock already. It's time for my visits. I'm sorry to tear myself away, but you understand how it is, Dr. Brown. Uh, Dr. Kildare will entertain you. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I have an emergency on the third floor, Dr. Gillespie. I know Dr. Brownlee will excuse me. Yes. Nice to have met you, Doctor. I'll wait. Well, I may be some time. 